everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you know, if you've been following us, you've seen that we've been out on the Florida Adventure Trail quite a bit. And while we've been doing those awesome adventures and hitting those cool trails, some companies have been reaching out wanting us to test some products while we're out there. And one of those companies is Loyo. Loyo is a up and coming LED light company that offers LED headlights, turn signals, tail lights for your Jeep JTs, JLs, and some other vehicles out there. And I'll link all this stuff in the description below us as always and they reached out to me wanting to see if I wanted to test their turn signals and as you guys know we've dropped the last fit LED bulbs into the stock halogen headlight housings and those have been fantastic but they have made our turn signals our halogen turn signals will look really really dim really dull and really outdated so we jumped at the opportunity to test these LED turn signals and they offer some cool features that the stock ones don't so we're really excited to see how they compare to the stock ones how they hold up to the trail use and abuse and uh, just how good they look on the Jeep JT and JL. All right, so here they are. Uh, the box is JL, but I've been assured that they are fit for the JT as well. Uh, I've also been assured that you will not need the Taser Mini or uh, Jeep to go on and turn your LED functions on, that these should be plug and play. Now, when you're ordering them from the company, make sure that you're selecting what stock you have, whether it be the halogen or the stock LED, if you're just replacing those, so you, you can get the right one shipped to you. Like I said, Plug and play, this shouldn't be a very hard install, but I am excited to see how bright these are, uh, how cool they are with the sequential turn signal, the daytime running lights that they have, uh, and I'm also excited to see how they compare and hold up to the factory turn signals, uh, and hopefully we don't have to swap these out. Uh, like I said, these were sent to me for testing. The coolest part is they said that I can say anything that I want. Uh, I'm not asked to speak highly of them if I don't think that, I, uh, that they deserve it. Uh, so I will give you the unbiased Overlander Ruse opinion of these as we go. So let's go ahead and kick this off and get this started. All right, so some of the features you're going to find, like I said, are the daytime running lights, the bright white LED, uh, the sequential turn signal, so they'll be kind of uh, fluid moving down the line. It'll also work with the four ways as well. And these have a little bit of a smoked lens, so you won't have the clear uh, see-through lens like you do from the factory, they'll be a little smoked. These are DOT approved, so you should have no issues uh, running these on the street with your various inspection sites and, and things like that. But double check with your state's laws on whether or not these are legal, but they are DOT approved, so you should have no issues there. Once they're out, I want to compare them side by side to the factory version to see how well made they are and whether or not they are of acceptable quality. One of the coolest things Loyo told me was that I could say whatever I wanted to say. Uh, they wanted a unbiased, full review and test of these lights for their market. Uh, so I'm going to give you the, the unbiased Overlanderoo's actual opinion of these things, and which I do every time I test something, so don't get, don't get worried that I'm giving you um, some garbage. I'm not. These will be the actual opinion. These were sent to me for free for test and evaluation, and uh, I'm excited to get them on the Jeep. Install can be a little tricky, but it should be super easy. I, I know that that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hear me out on this. You only need three tools, a Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter ratchet, and one of these pop, uh, plastic pop nut uh, panel removal type tools that you can get in any hardware store. Uh, so what you have to do is remove the inner fender liner, not super hard, and we gotta get access to back here. You can do this one of two ways. You can keep your fender on your Jeep, or you can go ahead and give this a firm tug out and remove your fender from your Jeep all the way. You probably don't even need to remove the tire, and we're gonna try not to. Uh, we're gonna leave the fender on the Jeep and we're gonna see how this goes, but it should be pretty straightforward And we'll kind of walk you through and give some tips and tricks along the way. So like I said, not too terribly complicated, not too terribly difficult What we're gonna do is pop out all these little plastic push pins around the fender liner And then there's three 10 millimeter bolts also holding the uh, plastic fender liner in We're gonna go through, we're gonna pop all those out, take the 10 millimeter bolts out And then we gotta pull this away from uh, the fender where it's pinched under we can pull that right out, giving us access to the backside of the turn signal assembly itself. So that's gonna be step one for us. Went through and we pulled out all the uh, plastic push tabs that are holding the fender liner in. Now we have three 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, there's one here, one here, and then there's one uh, more forward that you probably can't see from that angle. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and pull those out and then we should be free to kind of push this out and then over to get it out from uh, under the vehicle. And don't lose any of this hardware, you're gonna have to reuse it.
Might be a good idea to do a car wash for uh, undertaking this project, especially if you go off the road and hit the trails as much as we do. A lot of face full of dirt. Now we're just gonna start working it out from underneath the little part of the pinch fender, and you'll be able to get it back in there when you're done. since we opted to leave the fender on the Jeep itself. So this is gonna be the trickiest part. You're gonna have another 10 millimeter bolt uh, over here holding down the front of the fender to the frame itself. And then you have what looks like a little Phillips head pull tab. But if you just use your trim removal tool, you get behind it, you can pull that out. Don't worry about the uh, Phillips head looking thing on there. It's not really doing anything for you. Uh, so here's where we're gonna have to kind of pull the fender out a little bit towards us to get this to flap down giving us access to all the retaining hardware uh, for the turn signal itself. Uh, and you can see it's gonna take a little bit of force, but it'll come down, the fender will stay attached to your, your vehicle. And now we have access to all the retaining hardware for the turn signal itself, we can start pulling that out. Right, so on the back side, you're gonna find an abundance of T27 fasteners, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and start pulling those. Uh, there's four down here, there's two down here, two up there, uh, then a couple more throughout here holding this in. And then you're gonna have to kind of puzzle piece it out, uh, giving you access to the side marker as well. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start doing that now. Again, maintain all your hardware, you're gonna need it. So there are eight T27 screws holding uh, the housing in and there's some adhesive that you may have to work around uh, to pull this housing out. But the last thing you have to do is, there's another 10 millimeter bolt right here uh, that's gonna pull this retainer off so you can get better access to pulling your assembly out as well. And then we'll work on unrooting, if that's a word, the wiring harness and rerouting the new wiring harness and then we should be good to install the other. All right, so I have this thing just about out. You can see the strip of black adhesive that we had to kind of peel back. Uh, it goes on the top of this fender here, not a big deal. And this is just like uh, trying to pull an alternator out of, the, out of the bottom of your car without removing all the other stuff. Just take some, some patience, some finesse, and you can kind of wiggle it out uh, as you go. And from here, we have to go through and cut some zip ties and uh, reroute a new uh, wiring harness that comes with the turn signals. Uh, to get the new ones installed. That should be no big deal. So this is the factory wiring harness, and it's kind of held on by some of these push pins. Your removal tool will help you with that as well, and then we can disconnect it. You can start on the installation phase. All right, to disconnect, you're just gonna pull this red tab back. You can use a screwdriver or whatever tools you have on hand. Make sure not to break it. Preferably use a screwdriver. That's probably a better option. Uh, and then, Sort of squeeze it right off, and then you can put this right back onto its hanger once we get the new one on. Uh, now we're gonna have to reroute this forward to get it all out. Before we route this, I just wanna plug it in and make sure that it is truly plug and play. But there's a couple things that I wanna talk about here real quick. The thing that I had to do was kinda unwind the O-ring that's in here. Uh, it was a little twisted up and a little knotted up in there, so I had to pull that out with a screwdriver and gently kind of put it back into place. So pay attention to these things as you're going. Oh, yeah. We got the connectors connected. If you push really firmly and really hard, they do make a positive connection like they should. Uh, that O-ring is in there and unwound. We'll route it and make sure this all goes where it needs to go, but right now I just want to make sure that it all works like it should. So let's fire it up, see if it uh, does the blinky things. Now that we know it all works, let's get it installed in the in the Jeep itself. Uh, I do want to talk about one thing real quick. The construction of this definitely seems like it's on par uh, with the OEM one as well, with fit and finish. It is plastic just like the OEM one, but everything looks like it's sealed up really nicely. Everything was protected from the factory. So far, I'm pretty impressed. Let's get some LED breathers back here. So condensation inside here shouldn't be a big deal, but if it is, 
You just let them run, they'll heat up, the condensation will work its way out just like any other LED light out there uh, has these same breathers. So, so far, pretty impressed with what I'm seeing. Let's just see how they uh, how they fit into the Jeep itself now. I have a super satisfying part of peeling the plastic off the front here. We can see the smoke to lenses, right? When we're installing this, we want to make sure that this part up here where there is no LED lights, it's just clear plastic, that's going to go top, top of the fender and kind of be hidden by the fender itself. And that way you can see the LED lights through your opening. So keep that in mind when you're installing this. Looks like it got a little scratch up, it didn't. So a lot of the static electricity from the uh, protective plastic is attracting a lot of the dirt. Uh, I know that I made that look like a mess to try to install. Uh, just take your time. The pins all fit in where they should. Uh, it's all seated correctly now. Now it's just a matter of getting all this hardware. Yeah. Something I want to bring to y'all's attention. When installing these and pulling your hardware out, if you're not paying attention, you get these kind of screwed up, right? Uh, the finer threads, the little bit longer ones with the washers attached. These are going to be for all four corners of your assembly itself. And then these more coarse thread, smaller T27 screws are going to be for the center portion of uh, your assembly. And that will make sense uh, when you kind of look at it when you see it. So trying to get those screwed up, that way they, everything fits where it should. We're going to go ahead and get everything installed on this side and on to the next. We installed all eight T27 screws back in, one of the 10 millimeter bolts back in. So these lights are now in there secure. They're in the right spot. They look really good. I'm super excited about it. So Jeep's wiring harness had a lot of fasteners that you could probably try to reuse if you want. We may try to, to keep this thing tucked up. It's also the exact length, whereas Loyo's is a little bit excess, right? So that provides a little bit of flexibility for running aftermarket fenders, or you can have a little bit excess wire for troubleshooting if you need what have you. It is very well protected. It's, it's covered in a rubber sheathing, whereas Jeep's is kind of just covered in some, looks like some electrical tape and worked its way back. So we shouldn't have any chafing issues. We're routing it the exact same way. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with some zip ties and get this thing all squared away. Start putting the fender liner back in and then the side will be completely done. Well, what I did, and I'm gonna try to figure out a way to kind of secure it a little bit better up here, uh, is I just made a kind of a service loop type deal over here with some zip ties and obviously I'll trim the tails on those a little bit, uh, plugged it in so we had some excess. Should allow us to get rid of our chafing issues, also not have any excess over by the hot parts over there, and it should be tucked up under the uh, fender liner out of sight, and should be good to go. That's the clean up portion, right? We're gonna put this flat back up, put the fender liner back in, and to do that, same way we took it out, kind of Stick it up over the, the piece it goes, and we should be good to start putting our 10 millimeter bolts back into things, uh, cleaning up the edges here, and we should be off to the races once again. The next step is reinstalling our fender liner, so pay attention to where these little cutouts are. I don't know if you can see them from here, but they're gonna go around uh, some of these other cutouts to these, to these plastic rivets. We just gotta make sure that we put them right where they belong. Be able to squeeze that right back into where it goes. Goes in way easier than it came out. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, 10 millimeter bolts back in and kind of hold it up. And then I will go through and put my plastic push pins back where they belong. Uh, full disclosure, I broke two of them. They sell them at uh, Advanced Auto, so I should be able to go get them, or Jeep dealership probably has them. This will be nice and secure. I can still operate on the road safely without them, but I do want to replace them at some point. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're pulling these out. They might be a little fragile. Take your time, be gentle. Uh, I have a tendency to manhandle things, so it's kind of where I go wrong.
I'd say that's it, lights are installed. And it's not super hard, it's not super difficult, it's just a lot of steps involved. Taking off the fender liner, removing all eight bolts, putting all that stuff back together, running the, the wiring harness, things like that. So it took us about two hours to do both sides. A little step-by-step, -step, take your time, you don't want to break anything or lose anything. They look awesome, we're really digging them, and you may have noticed that I'm wearing a different shirt, and that's because we've had these installed for about a month now, and I didn't want to just jump right in and give you the first impressions or the initial impressions. I wanted to run them for a little while to make sure that we really did dig them, and, uh, and I think that we do. They complement the drop-in last fit LED light bulbs that we have really well. They no longer look a little outdated. Uh, or dim, so they're bright, they stand out, they, uh, they provide that safety on the road for turn signals, uh, especially here in Florida where nobody uses theirs, so that's good, we got that going on. Uh, and we're usually uh, function before form type of people where uh, we go for like the lift kits, the bumpers, the winches before we start dressing the vehicle up too much, but who says you can't have a good looking overlanding rig anyway. Uh, they have the sequential turn signal as you guys saw. They have the bright parking light on the side, uh, which is noticeably brighter than stock. They hold up really well. We have had no water intrusion. We had a little bit of uh, condensation one morning, but I haven't seen it since then. Uh, the lenses don't seem to be scratched with all the bouncing rocks. We have a ton of construction over here. Um, I don't know how they're going to hold up with trail use, but um, certainly definitely something to pay attention to. The whole package is just really tied together really nicely. They work. Uh, they fit and they function perfectly. I've got no error messages on my dash. We didn't need a Taser Mini to make sure that they work. Uh, both turn signals work. I don't see any flicker of any of the individual LED bulbs in here. I really like the look of the smoked uh, lenses when they're off and when they're on. And uh, I gotta be honest, I'm just a, a huge fan of them all together. So for the price point of about $159, I really can't complain. But if you check down in the description, I'll provide a discount code for you guys to get additional 10% off that. Uh, that just helps you guys, helps us a little bit too, get some exposure. Um, like I said, Loyal told us that we could say anything we want. There's a few things that I think this product could use that would make it stand out a little bit more. Uh, some high impact polycarbonate lenses, uh, some additional push pins, so when you take that fender liner off, if you break one like we did, unless you broke two, uh, you have some replacements right in the box ready to go. And also I think you could benefit from a more secure way to, to run that wiring harness uh, through the fender itself. So after saying all that, would I spend my money on these? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would buy these, and I would recommend them to my friends without hesitation. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous coming into it, uh, just because I hadn't heard much of the company. I didn't know what to expect uh, as far as quality-wise, but I'm pleasantly surprised and, and super impressed, and I, and I think that you guys will dig these too. So like I said, check that description down below. You get that, that discount code, and they have some other offerings on there too, so go feel free to check those out.